going live. I don't like the Q&As. I just like watching it when you guys are busy on your homestead. I just skip the Q&As. I have no interest. You know, I can respect that. The Q&As are definitely not for everyone. Uh, just a way to, uh, to connect with people that may be more interested that might want to get some more information and uh, ask some questions. Maybe some little details that don't come out in the videos. Yeah, if you feel like being a little more interactive, but it's not for everyone. Yeah. Some people don't like a don't like to watch us sit around for an hour <laughs> jibber jabbing. <laughs> uh, the Epicut Tiny House, how's it going? DG, how you doing? Oh, you gotta turn that down. No, no sounds. Thirteen months homestead. How's it going? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, not to each their own. Uh, some people just like the videos, some people like the live Q&A sessions, and um, yeah, a little something for everyone. Twin Flame Makers, what's up? Oh, they made a live. How's it going? <laughs> oh, man. It has been hot. How hot was it? Well, today got up to 102. I think tomorrow's gonna be hotter. You're supposed to make like some kind of joke. Like it was so hot that you're the comedian. You're the comedian. People <laughs> don't know how funny you are. She holds it in. She holds it in, and she waits till after the cameras roll, and then she makes all of her funny jokes. You guys don't even know. What have we got here? 13 moon of homestead. She says she planted a lot today. Sore back, but it feels good to get stuff in the soil. Uh, Lynette, I was reading about that. That is impressive work you did out there. Incredible. Happy Camper Brenda. I like the videos. You guys are doing a good job. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. E.W. Georgie. Uh, Sherry from the African Tiny House says she likes both. I got, I got words for you, by the way. A little later on. <laughs> Andrew H, how's it going? Geeky Gardens, what's up? In the woods with Wolfie. Vicky from Fort Worth, Texas. Edward Stero, what's up? Boom! Welcome to Chickenlandia, what's up? Pocket change. Love the cistern bill. Great stuff. Thank you very much. OMG's in the house. Ozark Mountain Goats. Upper Sky DJ says, I never know what little tidbit of information will pop up, so I like the Q&A and videos. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, because people out there, they watch the videos, they have questions, because we may not be able to get as thorough as we want in there. Yeah. Some people are like, you know, what the heck are you doing? Besides dancing around and acting all crazy in the desert. Hello from Maricopa. It's hot as heck here. I've been getting headaches from this heat. Yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah. The heat is intense, and it's really only going to get hotter. Have you thought of a hot joke yet? Okay, well, I'm going to keep you on the, on the hook for that one. <laughs> also, I have that same pillow. What? So Dahlia says she was abducted by aliens, but she's back now. They take you aboard the mothership. Finally get to go back. So Pocket Change says, are you totally off-grid and running only on solar? Uh, yeah. Completely off-grid. Um... Uh, well, let's get into that. Yes, we're running completely on solar. Uh, our water is solely on rainwater right now. We do. Go ahead. 
We do use propane. We do use propane. Our RV stove and heat in the winter. So some people question whether propane is really, uh, you know, really an off-grid energy source. To me, it probably, I don't think it probably is. Because um, you're kind of dependent on something for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I could see it's it. debatable. It's I debatable. See it. <laughs> but... It's debatable. Went to Phoenix yesterday when I got back home in Sierra Vista. I jumped out of my car and kissed the ground. <laughs> I bet. Man, if it's over 100 degrees here, in Phoenix it's got to be close to like 120 probably. <laughs> At least over 110. JC, DC in the AZ, what's up? How's the dog doing? Looks like he's doing better. Wondering how you handle the heat so well. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, so luckily our solar uh, setup is enough to run air conditioning. Um, and if, if we didn't have the air conditioning, I don't think uh, crew here would survive the heat at all. Uh, he does really poorly when it starts getting, what, probably close to 90. So, and anything above that, uh, yeah, it's not good. Twin Flame Acre says, we just tended to a bunch in the garden here in Waco, Texas. Do y'all have anything planted? We have a small <laughs> garden, so I think it's pretty small. Um, but we yeah, got some herbs and a tomato plant, a basil plant, a jalapeno, and there's a grapevine in there, some concrete. Grapevine, you say. <laughs> and it's, uh... Hug to the grapevine. <laughs> honey, honey, yeah. Dun, da, 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 Everything is... Da, 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 we have shade cloth over our garden, though. Oh, oh, oh. What's that? <laughs> Dancing crazy in the desert. Is it the heat, or did you eat something wrong? <laughs> Maybe a combination of both. <laughs> Dahlia says they tried taking her to the mothership, but she sweeped her legs. <laughs> Sweep more legs, 2020. Puppy's recovering from the snake bite. It's good to hear. Good to hear. <laughs> so Dahlia's suggesting maybe a trade. She could send the naked dogs over here and then crew up there. Maybe <laughs> Lazy Pond Farm, how's it going? 110 in Maricopa. Over, over D bus says, how many snakes on average? What would you say? Um, five. Wait. Average. Like, total snakes? Annually. Annually of all snakes? Yes. Every kind of snake? Yes. A dozen. Wow. That's a higher number than I was thinking, but yeah. Okay, maybe six to twelve. Yeah, on average. Six to twelve of, of not only poisonous snakes, but also probably the um, non-venomous non -venomous as well. Venomous. Important poisonous. distinction. <laughs> Important distinction. How many watts of solar is your setup and is it adequate for your needs right now? Uh, so we have 15 320 watt panels. Um, and it's it's usually adequate. And it's not, the inverters aren't faulting. Yeah, uh, I think, does some, is that going to make it in the video? I probably will. So we talk about that probably actually in the video up coming up. But, yeah, for the most part, uh, you know, except in the summer when the air conditioning is running a lot, uh, this, this system can't handle it. You, know, you can't run the air conditioning at night. 
because this thing just, it, the air conditioning is so inefficient. We don't really need it at night. And the temperature drops down quite a bit. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it meets our needs quite a bit. Unless the inverter goes out, which it's been doing for whatever reason. I can't figure it out. Because by the time I try and figure it out, it just corrects itself. So I guess that's good. Delta on the Rock Homestead, what's up? Oh yeah, D Dahlia says propane, unsubbed. <laughs> and Happy Camper Brenda says nothing wrong with propane being off grid. You live in a desert source of wood is hard to come by. I think definitely we don't have a lot of big trees around here at all. But something we're looking into doing when we build our house is a rocket stove. Yes. So you can use stick fuel for that, which we have we have enough of that. Uh, yeah, and nothing wrong with like growing more out here, specifically for the purpose of stick fuel. Oh. Uh, Dahlia's practicing social distancing. Uh, she would sweep more legs <laughs> if she could get closer. Or stilts. Sorry, Beeperman says, sorry if this has been asked before, but how many gallons of water will the cistern hold? Close to 14,000 gallons. 17 foot interior diameter, 8 feet tall. Not quite 14,000, but pretty close. I just say 14. Round it up. Yeah, we can't wait to start uh, getting the home ready, too. Uh, crazy, yeah, it's just uh, this build right here has been taking a little bit longer than we thought. Don't they all? And plus now with the heat, man, you can't, you can't be out there too long. Uh, doing the kind of work that that requires, like uh, shoveling rocks or whatnot. <laughs> Woo, it's intense. Yeah, you can work out there for a little while, but then you gotta yeah. take a break. It's crazy. It's... Oof, itchy nose. Itchy. I don't want to be picking my nose on camera. <laughs> no, please don't do it. <laughs> but it itches so bad, I don't know what's going on. Right when the live starts, then my like my nose wants to start itching. Oh, now you're making my nose. Ah. Itchy. Happy farms. You guys have been working so hard. Came by to say hi. Well, hi, Danny. How's hi. it going? Uh, Eric asks, how long will it take for the Just rainwater so. system to flow? You're supposed to be. What? What am I supposed to be? Taking a okay, well... <laughs> How long will it take? Uh, good question. That's uh, it's a tough question. I guess it all really depends on how much rain we do get, uh, what our water usage will be. Um, but even if we do get the average, uh, it could fill up maybe... I don't know. I don't know if one month soon seems would fill it up, but maybe with the full monsoon and the mini monsoon, it could. You think? You think it'll overflow? Ah, like... oh, man, it's tough. It's tough. I don't know. Cause, it's a lot yeah, of water. I don't know. It's a lot of water, but we don't honestly use a lot of water. I mean, we still got a lot of water in those tanks. <laughs> I can't answer that. Yeah, the heat has definitely like hit a, hit a brick wall on the project. But, you know, we go out there and we do what we can when we can. Uh, I've been trying to have her I might like, just kind of stay inside because someone needs to be inside with crew because crew will panic if <laughs> if he's in here all alone. He'll, he'll jump up on the bed because he can kind of like get a better vantage point outside and he'll be okay a little bit. But otherwise, he'll, he'll go into full-on panic mode if we're not here. Yeah. So, I think he has levels of panic, though. It's <laughs> yeah. first level, he starts barking. And then you know, if he's really scared, he might start pooping and peeing. So. Yeah. So we don't want that. 
So I try and like, you know, I'll, I'll do more of the outside stuff when it gets hot. However, you know, a lot of stuff needs to be done on the inside. I'm like, you take care of that. And then we try and balance things out that way. Not that I'm not jumping in here when I can take a break <laughs> and cool off a little bit. That sounds really hot. Oh my goodness. What sounds really hot? Like temperatures in the 90s and 90% humidity. Yeah, that would right. be really. Luckily, luckily, we don't have to deal with the humidity. Yeah. Uh, high temperatures are bad enough, but like you get that humidity, there's like no escape from that heat. I feel like I'm choking when there's that much humidity. Yeah, it's like that. It's like yeah. it's tough to breathe sometimes. And like we can get under the shade and it provides a lot of relief. Yeah. But and we get the the breezes coming through. It's nice. What elevation are you at? We are at about forty three hundred feet. So we're under a mile, but still kind Just of under a mile. Elevations. Uh yeah. Happy Camper Brenda says, sleep during the day, work great at night. You know, yeah. that's honestly, well, we don't quite do that, but sometimes we will we get up early, her. hit it out, uh, knock a bunch of stuff out, kind of do some different kind of activities during the day, and then maybe work into the evening. Uh, 15 minutes, yes. could you do wind power too? I think we could um, just be aware of like what we want to set up a, a wind power system, but I think maybe down the road so we get a lot of wind. It is very windy. Heirloom permaculture's in the house. How are my favorite desert dwellers? Hot. It's hot here. <laughs> We are in the thick of summer. Ah, uh, man, honestly, it got hot quick this year. I feel like usually maybe a couple more weeks before it gets this hot. Dolly is back. Do you need to use any chemicals to keep the water clean to use? We don't really use chemicals too often, although you can. Uh, I know some people that have used a little bleach in their water over longer periods um, but really you, know, you have a safe way to catch it make sure no light and debris get in there and it's usually pretty good yeah um, I think for our house we're going to have some kind of filtration system going into the house and then for any drinking water we use a Berkey filter just to make sure that it's safe Uh, so Abel Williams asked about um, just bringing the dog outside. Yeah, yeah, usually we can. Most times of the year, he'll just sit outside. But when it gets hot like this, he, we can't be outside. Like once it gets 90 and above, uh, it's just too much for him. So we got to put him. So we got to put him uh, inside with the air conditioning. Not that you complain too much about that. Right? <laughs> Air <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, that uh, yeah, but that was a uh, javelina. Luckily, we haven't seen the javelina back in a while. PC guys, off grid cabin says, do you guys have the roof surface area to fill that up? Yes, yes, yeah, definitely with the catchment area. The average rainfall, we can do it. So the Epica Tiny House asks, what's feral cement? Uh, so feral cement is, wait, feral cement or feral cement? I believe she's referring to our, the technique we'll be using. Okay, so 
it's basically it's a mix of Portland cement and sand and it's applied to like a wire framework almost like a plaster over it did you go into the mix no I just yeah. said cement and sand that's what it is basically yeah yep cement and sand a little heavier on the sand than the cement you need. Uh, Lazy Pond Farm with the Super Chat. Thank you very much. Uh, how far is the nearest fishing hole? Man, I don't even know. Uh, I think... No, I don't think it's Bisbee. Or it might be around the Bisbee area. I forget what it's called. It might be about an hour and a half away. I want to say the nearest fishing hole might be about an hour and a half away. Yeah. There's a little bit of water around. There's, there's a little bit of water if you're willing to travel. Uh, Pirate Flipper says, Hi, you guys. Love what you're doing. Just bought a piece of property up in Concho. Nice. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. JCDC in the AZ says, How do you keep the small bugs out of your water system? So... Usually you want some type of screen, a finer, finer mesh screen. Uh, you want that somewhere probably near the water collection point. Uh, Some place probably with easy access so you can kind of clean it regularly. But I would definitely recommend like a finer mesh screen. Yeah. Definitely want to keep like mosquitoes out and stuff like that. Yep. And uh, always have your pipes at an angle so no light can get in as well. Mm -hmm. uh, two big factors in keeping uh, very clean water. Well, I think growing in there. Our Serenity Homestead. Hey y'all, sorry I'm late, but I made it. Well, hey, <laughs> we appreciate that. And I see Pharmacy Seeds Network. I don't know if you... I uh, did not. But hello. What's up, Carlton? Richard Solomon, what's up? Bob Ernest says, how will the rainwater be collected from your roof construction? Oh. Very good idea. I don't know if you caught the last video, but that's where we put in the pipes. And basically we'll have five pipes going around a gutter system on the cistern. Mm -hmm. So our roof will, uh, our rain roof will dump water onto the cistern. And the cistern roof itself will catch water and it will flow into the pipes around the edge of the cistern. I don't know if we went into detail on that, but uh, I think we'll probably go into some or more of those details about how that works, especially like later on. You're still going to use the other tanks. Yes, yes. Any Anything we'll have, uh, we'll still keep in use. Um, we'll probably connect uh, the tanks that we have I think to the shed uh, but that's probably way more water than we'll be able to collect from the shed so maybe we'll have one of those uh, tanks moved to a different location but as long as there's still hold water we'll still use it <laughs> like a sister to me what's that oh Ah, uh, Carlton's got jokes. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, we could get into that right now. Rocks in we can, here. we could get into that. So, this came in the mail. These came in the mail. So Sherry from the Africa Tiny House, the Africa Tiny House, good. said she wanted to contribute rocks what we're doing out here to the Gabion. So she sent us these uh, these cool rocks. One of them here, the Africa Tiny House. Here and then uh, over here, Jeff from Bobblehead Homestead. I think Jeff wanted to uh, wanted to get in on that, so I think she did up a rock for him too. Uh, so that is awesome. That's so nice. Yeah, that's so cool, Sherry. We appreciate that. Africa Tiny House, Bobblehead Homestead. <laughs> so 
that was very cool of them. Appreciate that. Uh, JNC's Oregon Homestead, what's up? My bad sense of humor. <laughs> uh, Stacy says, y'all are making me feel bad about all the projects I have. <laughs> and that's our goal. <laughs> That is our goal to make everyone else feel a little lazier. <laughs> no, um, what's it? Well, thank you. I mean, we, you know, we were, we're loving uh, getting out there doing the projects. Maybe not in the 100 degree heat, but, uh, you know, <laughs> most other times we like it. And, uh, you know, hopefully it inspires eventually to, to get to some of those projects done. Like, if they can, if they can do it. We can get it done. <laughs> uh, 13 Moon says, where will the cistern overflow go? Uh, good question on that. Uh, so we have the overflow pipes in place, but right now they don't go anywhere. Right now they would just uh, flow right outside the tank. But uh, what I'll probably end up doing at some point is... Um, adding to those pipes and we'll probably overflow it to uh, some type of basin I don't think we have it quite figured out right but I imagine some type of basin and we'll probably go in some type of trees in there <laughs> uh, yeah Carlton uh, man this project is huge and Sometimes we get ideas and it makes it even harder. <laughs> but I think we're finally getting close to uh, tying this one up. Hopefully soon. It's, it's tough to tell. Yeah, uh, honestly, Carlton, he says, why not overflow to the next one? And, you know, that, that could be a possibility as well. Uh, I don't know how soon we want to be building another sister. Mm -hmm. Maybe take a little break. And build a house, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Take a little break from cistern building. Maybe we'll do a house. Well, Mark Silverman says he, she's been enjoying the videos. It's always interesting and uh, kind of a foreign experience to him living in New Zealand. It says, good luck with all the builds. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate that. Well, 13 Moon says, you inspired me to get stuff done. Well, well thank you. We don't sweat like this for nothing. In fact, right after the live, uh, I plan on getting out there and shoveling more rocks around. Because shoveling rocks is another never-ending project around here. Have the javelina started using the water shade area? I haven't uh, seen them at all around here since I put that fence up. I actually uh, I finished the fence and then I put the water out and I put out our little trail camp to see if I could catch them and I haven't seen them. So, we'll see. Maybe they're gone for good. <laughs> Seems like they'll come around for a little while and then they disappear for a while and then they come back again later. So we'll probably see them again sometime. They messaged us on Instagram saying, hey, uh, we love what you guys are doing. 
Would you be interested in Black Soldier Flat Earth? And that's something you've been wanting for a while. For a long time. So I says, so I says, uh, first I gotta check with the boss. <laughs> like, do you want Black Soldier Flat Earth? And she's like, hell yeah, I want the Black Soldier Flat Earth. <laughs> So that was cool. They sent us some. Uh, that was that was really cool. Of course, when they got here, you were like, "What do what we, we what do we do with this?" <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have a. So you, you got something set up. Area for them. So now they're busy composting for us, and they may become chicken food in yeah. the future. Chickens love them. But there's there are such interesting creatures. I've been fascinated with that for a while yeah. since I learned about them. Very cool. Set it up right, they harvest themselves. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah! I remember <laughs> what we're going to talk about now. Big things are coming down the pipeline. Should we talk about that? You guys, you guys want to hear about that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Alright. So we had this idea. Sort of like a combination of things. So, you know, what we're all about here, we're all about living sustainably. But not only that, but doing it in an environmentally responsible way. So a couple, a couple of our really big interests, of course, is permaculture, homesteading and stuff like that. So... Uh, we decided to come up with a little group, probably end up putting together a little Facebook group, but we like to call it Greensteaders, Greensteading. I'm pretty excited about that idea. Um, you've been, something you've been kind of rolling around in your head for a while, I think. It's been going, it's been rolling around. I got a lot of things rolling around up here. <laughs> Not all of it makes sense. Right. <laughs> but sometimes something shakes loose uh so yeah i thought that was kind of a cool idea green steady uh with a green dream project right makes a lot of sense uh so i think we're probably going to set up a facebook group here uh very shortly uh but i'm excited about that and other things might be coming down the pipeline uh with that whole idea we're very excited about that. Yeah, we can't talk about that. We can't talk about that. That's Sorry. top secret. Soon. Soon. But, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea of that, like, having a group for that. You know, it's not just about us and our channel and things, but uh, kind of opening it up to more ideas surrounding, like, homesteading, sustainability, and permaculture. And like getting different people's ideas and perspectives on that. Yeah, uh, I think it's a great way to start building a forum, building a dialogue, and collecting uh, knowledge from a lot of those people that have been watching our videos, and maybe they have ideas about ways to do things. Uh, so what a great way to sort of like pool people's like collective ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm really far behind. Okay, oh, Bieberman said, since the cistern is mostly below ground level, do you anticipate the water will be cool in the summer? And I think it absolutely I, will. I think it will be. That's my guess. I think the temperature should stay pretty constant throughout the year. So it should be a little bit warmer in winter, cooler in summer. Yeah. yeah. Thumbs up says, we are reading the Encyclopedia of Country Living by Carla Emery. It's great. Have you read it? Also, how many chickens do you have? I have not read, I have not read that, have you? I have not. But we will definitely check that out. How many chickens do we have? We have six chickens. <laughs> we got six. More to come. Lock the page name up fast. Yeah. Here <laughs> on So trademark that name, Green Study. Yeah, oh shoot, we gave it out. Uh -oh. No stealing that. <laughs> <laughs> DIY solar homesteads getting attacked by mosquitoes. Yeah, six. Those are rookie numbers. 
How many, how many chickens would we have to have to not be rookies? I have a feeling <laughs> that it might be something quite more significant that we have. <laughs> See, Ecocentric says that would work for him. Basically, homesteading in harmony with nature. Bees in bikinis, hello. Oh, uh, awesome Arizona says consider some blocking between those sister and rafters. Too late for that now. I was thinking about it. But then we did. Uh, whistle, thicket, whistle Thicket says, I like you guys gave the Javelinas water to try to do similar stuff, living with the local ecosystem as much as I can. Using it, yeah. Um, yeah, we got lots of praying mantises out here, and I'm sure we got bats too, so we definitely want to utilize those as well. Uh, but that's, that's the key. Uh, work with nature as much, much as you can. Yeah. It can be a really uh, efficient way of doing things. And no rue. No rue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 600. I'm guessing that's the answer to you. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> that's rough. We've got a ways to go. Oh. Maryland permaculture's numbers just went down. <laughs> well, get back to work there, Carlton. Thanks for stopping in. Oh, man, where am I? Sand Hollow Homestead, what's up? Our Serenity Home says we're about to expand our flock to seven chickens. Two Rhode Island Reds are arriving shortly. Adam Garza says, God bless. Keep on keeping on. Thank you very Thank much. You. Oh, I think you're almost caught up to me. Uh, so Charles Speakman says, talking about are we putting anything underneath there to possibly catch anything that falls off and breaks off uh, while we're doing the ferro cement. And uh, we had talked about that, but then we decided not to. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good call or not, but... Uh, that's the call we made. Um, we're going to give everything a good clean out before any water goes in there. Yeah, we figured if anything does uh, fall through while we're uh, doing it, it shouldn't be too hard to clean up. It's just plastic down there, so anything cement should scrape right up. I've been watching your videos for a couple weeks. Thank you for the channel. It's very helpful. My partner and I just bought five acres in Colorado in a similar climate here, an inspiration to us. Thank well, you. thank you very much for that. Good luck. Uh, good luck out there on your land. Five acres. That's pretty exciting. Our oldest daughter's graduation is tomorrow. Such an anticlimactic end to high school for her. Well, I can only imagine. But congratulations, though, on the graduation. And that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Uh, it's got to be. I uh, can't imagine kind of going out that way with uh, you know everything that's been going on. But still an exciting uh, step forward. There. Jewelry time. What's happening? Saying howdy from Las Vegas. What's up, man? What's up? 
How many javelinas do we see out here in a day? Sometimes none. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes. I think the most we've seen coming through here at any given time is five or six. Five or six tops. Yeah. Sometimes we just see like one coming through by right? itself. So, Which is that's good. kind of unusual, right? I mean, they're uh, usually traveling packs, don't they? Yeah, I mean, they travel with their families, but I guess they can travel alone sometimes. Sometimes you got to walk your own path. <laughs> Christian Warren, thank you. Whoa, Super thank you so much for that. Uh, crazy generous. Good work. Well, thank you very much. It just blows me away. Thank you. John Yarwood says, how long before the roof is finished and what's the next project after that? Uh, how long until... Uh, the, that's a good question. So... <laughs> The next video is a, is further progress on the roof. Uh, again, we didn't get quite as far as we would like, um, but it's very exciting. We got the, um, speaking of tomorrow's video, <laughs> uh, we got a lot of the wiring done. Uh, we just have to basically add a little bit more rocks into the gutter area, and then we can um, wire that up as well. So what you get to see tomorrow is the main wiring over the whole cistern. That was like five layers of basically chicken layer or stucco mesh going over the uh, top of that. It was crazy. Uh, but the next, so how long will that take? Uh, I don't know. How long do you think it will be before we get this done? I don't know. I was hoping it would be done by now. Some challenges have definitely been in the way, but I think we're getting close. Maybe Maybe soon, maybe a couple of weeks. Maybe we'll see. And then at, right after that, we gotta re redo some of the gutters. So we're we have ideas about redoing the gutter system and um, just changing the existing room. room. We just want to we need to simplify simplify reroute reroute everything's changing whole new plan but for the better. Twin Flame Makers, going to bed, y'all. Be, be good. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs> Dahlia says, uh, are you ahead of me now? Uh, Javelina sounds super scary at night when you can't see where they yeah. are. Yes. So, I mean, a lot of times they come around, Javelinas come around at night. And we only know because they'll wake this guy up. But then you hear them at night, and going out there, they're so dark and everything, you can't see where they are, but you can smell them. Yeah, they smell bad. They got a powerful scent. Uh, and then you then like you have a flashlight, or sometimes I'll put on my headlight, and you can see their shiny glowing eyes out there. And they they make kind of like a pig, like snorting sounds, and they clack their teeth, which is scary. <laughs> but this guy don't care. This guy will... I'll go after him. You don't care. On an even keel after this, Ooh. are you going to use this cistern water for drinking as well as for irrigation? Yep. Everything. Everything. Uh, yeah, we don't have a well, and we're going to try to use it for everything that we need. Yep. Uh... We'll have a couple filters in place, but otherwise, we're probably pretty much going with rainwater for everything out here. Very exciting. I like that. I think I like the, the idea better than a well. Um, in fact, uh, uh, Built on the Rock Homestead was talking a little bit about the well problems she's been having. And about, you know, like, do you want to go with a well versus rainwater harvesting? It's something you got to think about because not only can be digging the well be expensive, but uh, maintenance and upkeep, mm -hmm. a lot of costs involved in there. So, Tarl, uh, we have not seen... Well, they, so far they've left everything alone, but so we, far haven't, we, haven't seen we haven't seen them around. So, 
Kate Rogers asks, are hobblings able to be tamed or domesticated? Can you tell, tell the difference between them and seen any babies? Uh, as far as I know, they are not. But I, I don't know if anyone's tried to domesticate them. There's probably laws There's against probably laws against that. You really can't them. keep, I don't think you can keep them. Um, They're meant to be wild. I haven't seen any. I'd like to see some babies, but we haven't seen any on our property yet. Uh, my brother was just telling me the story about a guy he knows who he saw a baby javelina in his yard or something and he thought it it was like dark out. He thought it was one of his <laughs> his dogs, his chihuahuas, so he went over by it. He started trying to pet it, like, oh come here. And then uh, it started squealing and making these crazy sounds. And then the mother, was, which was nearby, got really upset and started charging at him. So, don't touch baby. Don't touch the babies. <laughs> don't touch the babies. But they are very cute. They are very cute. Very cute babies. Yeah, I built on the rock homes that I can't imagine what that bill was like. He's in bikinis, so bears smell bad, like wet dog and rotten. I've never smelled That a sounds bear. pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> I want to avoid a well too. Have you been hauling water onto your land at all? Has the rainwater been enough for all your needs? <clears throat> we only had water uh, delivered here, what, twice? Yeah, Once, twice. the first time when, um, before we had our rain roof filled, so we couldn't collect any water, right? And then I think one more time we had to have it filled. And since then, we, we haven't needed to, so which is pretty cool. <laughs> So yeah, we are, and we're getting approaching monsoon season again, so... Yeah, I'm kind of amazed like how long this water has lasted in just those like smaller tanks, 5,000 gallons. So yeah, uh, we can gravity feed when there's enough water in the tanks. We can gravity feed that to our trailer. And we don't need to use the pump at all. And when we do need to use the pump, I still think we have quite a while, quite a bit of water in there. So we we're still able to gravity feed that water from the tanks into the, the, the trailer. Mm -hmm. We're still able to gravity feed it, which is mind blowing. So we still have quite a bit of water left. I think we'll make it. Yeah. Easily, so yeah. Uh, and so, and we've got like less than 5,000 gallons worth of storage, like 4,500 now. I think it's a little over 5,000 if you count all of our uh, water storage c capacities. I think, uh, how are you doing on the first flush? Because we did actually get a little bit of rain, mm -hmm. and we did get more on those first flush tanks. Are we out again, or do we still have more? We still have some, a little bit. Oh, look at this, Stacy LaBelle. Welcome to the crew pack. Oh, thank you. Oh, Thanks that so is much. awesome. Uh, That is awesome. Sand Hollow Homestead said, would a motion detection light deter the javelinas? Um, and it might. I saw some that um, we were thinking about buying possibly before. So, but you had some problems when you went out and you were trying to chase them away so here's the things with javelinas uh they might they might get scared easily maybe uh but they they get used to that stimulation very quick so if it doesn't directly harm them like a flashing light might work but they if it doesn't harm them they might end up coming back uh so one night yeah like she was saying i did go out there headlight on 
and I was out there trying to like make some noise and they didn't care they just looked at me like uh yeah what's up <laughs> and one of them didn't even one of them was like drinking water from our gray water didn't even look up <laughs> I was just sitting there drinking I'm like hello I'm here scaring you off <laughs> can you please try and respect that a little bit <laughs> What? Oh, thank you, Dahlia. <laughs> thank you. Kenneth Palmer says, hello from Japan. What are your future build projects? Well, um, our next big one is building our house. Building our house. We need a place to live besides this trailer. Something a little bit more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. Maybe we won't have to run this uh, air conditioner so much. She's Dahlia says she's here for the UFOs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, which uh, 13 Moons brings up the that uh, deck again that I built. <laughs> you know, uh, now that we're not using it for the roof, yeah, we can totally turn that into a uh, spaceship chicken coop. We, we might have to now. <laughs> Uh, Linda May has a good idea. If you're worried about cement falling into the cistern, use the scraps to cut off the liner and lay them in the bottom, so we can have a quick cleanup. Just oh yeah, just scoop everything up. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I think we should do that. Where are you gonna get your earth bags from? Uh, so we actually have we are actually already have the bags. Yeah, where we got uh, we used some of them for the cistern, and we got plenty for the house. Uh, but we got all that information on one of our videos. Um, maybe one of the moderators can throw that video up there. If not, I'll try and remember to throw that in the uh, show notes for the video. But there is a video. We got all that information. It tells you where we got the earth bags from. It's got all the contact information for that business, and also where we got the liner from. From the sister. Wendy C says, Good night, y'all. God bless. Well, thank you so much for being here, Wendy. We really appreciate you joining us. DIY Solar Homes says, I'm out now. I'm on over. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Yes, we saw that. Stacy Mabel. With the cows, but I don't know. These the the javelina seem much more. I bet that would determined. Really Maybe. Probably. Could you fly that at night though? It's dangerous to fly it. <laughs> Might be dangerous. Thank you very much, uh, 13 Moons. Just got that, uh, put that there video. Appreciate oh, that. Um, <laughs> so that. Like, <laughs> but they got such they tiny, tiny legs. little legs. <laughs> uh, sometimes crew doesn't even freak them out. Honestly, like, if it gets close enough, yeah, they'll run. But man, like, they're pretty bold. Oh, where's crew? We haven't given our crew break. Is <laughs> he's not in full, he's not on uh, he's not in full on sleep mode. He's uh he's just resting there. Oh, there he oh. <laughs> there you go. Now now he's comfortable. Look at that. <laughs> He knew we were, he knew he was uh, on camera, did you hear that? He knew I put him on camera and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Havelin is... D-G-A-F. <laughs> oh, I 
Yeah, they have to be like right in danger. And then they run. Like, yeah. But they only run so far. Like I chased one for a while. I'm like get away from here. And I chased one for a little <laughs> while and then it ran for a little bit and then it was just like, then it yeah. just slowed and then I was like, okay, that's far enough. But what's scary is they have bad eyesight. I think they have good, like, they can smell good here, but so they might just run towards you or you don't know like where they're gonna run either which scares me yeah that's the thing they could run at you <laughs> just because they're trying to get away in a panic bees in bikini says thank you for, thank you for having me uh, love your channel well thank you thank you for thank you for joining us we appreciate it uh <laughs> that's right that's right thumbs up <laughs> um so yeah big things are coming uh, definitely check out that group. Uh, we'll have that group up soon. I think exciting things coming down the line, line, line for that. Green status. Uh, again, many thanks to Blossoms and Bundles for the Soldier Flies, mm -hmm. uh, the Africa Tiny House, Bobblehead Homestead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those rocks are awesome. Soldier flies are fantastic. Um, you got anything? What you want to share? The last few minutes here. We got any other questions? Any questions from you guys during these last couple minutes? Feeling any last questions? I wasn't there, so, uh, no, that happened, it happened to me. Sometimes I'll do that, I'll just like, yeah. and dodge. Mm -hmm. Filling with Todd says, what's the temp? What did he hit, 102 today? Yes, 102. What was the temp over there? That's yeah. what I want to know. How hot was it over there, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to dodge them javelin, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna need to slow them a little bit. <laughs> They're asking for evidence. We'll get that on camera. We'll get that on camera. It happens a lot. So. Did, I, did I tell that story? Did we tell that story of the, the, the javelina that walked right past me? I don't think so. So that javelina, real quick, that javelina that we saw underneath the trailer, I was outside <laughs> when it came when it came to our little campgrounds out here. I was by the car, I was leaning up against the car. I look over, I, I sense this animal walk, coming by, I sense something coming by. I look over, it's this javelina walking right next to me. And then I look over, it looks up at me, and then it just kind of like trots a little bit faster. And then it heads off to like get some, get some <laughs> gray water. It's like, oh, busted, I better move along here. I'm like, what? Middle it's kind of been middle of the day. <laughs> Had to be maybe 10 feet, not even, from me. That was crazy. I was like, whoa, that thing is bold. <laughs> Woo, getting 112, 111. Oh. oh, you're making me feel glad I'm in shape. down here in the south. <laughs> the Africa Tiny House says, <laughs> uh, I hit 87 there and she was melting. <laughs> yeah, he didn't care. He just looked at me like, Oh, I guess I better mosey along, get my gray water. Can you hunt them and eat them? Uh, no, oh, they are protected. They are protected. Yeah. Well, our time is up. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Always so much fun. Uh, and you guys always make this a blast to uh, to come in here and, and chat. We appreciate the questions. Uh, we appreciate you spending that time with us. Thank you again to all of our moderators. They always do just such an awesome job. Uh, if you see those channels in blue, go check them out. They're awesome people. Again, the Africa Tiny House, Blossoms and Bundles. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for joining us.